you know, it's not just the horrible timing with the shipping. They should have known better. I got a refund. It's all good. But it's the fact that this has sucked so much time. It's people where I do not like people to mess with my time. This has been such a waste of my time. Got everything cut back, cleaned up for the most part. When I got to the Ivies, I got a little bit lazy, but pretty much all the dead foliage has been removed. Things are in humidity domes that need humidity domes, or I think would recover better with humidity of some sort. I have the Fetonias, Syngoniums, Begonias, Ficus Pumala <laughs> right here. Don't do that. Couple of Ivies, and then I cut off all the dead pseudobulbs from this Oncidium Twinkle Orchid in the back and put some cinnamon powder over where I made those cuts. Film the whole process. That video will be out in a few weeks. I want to give it some time, right? So everybody can see what they look like. The main thing I'm curious about are the Lime Zinger Xanthosomas. Let me go ahead and grab one so you can have a look. This one right here, not too bad. Not too bad, right? It looks more bad on camera. In person, it's pretty white in there and there's just a hint of green in the middle. I just made that cut. Now that cut's been made that whatever is left to rot is going to continue to rot away. And the main goal here is going to be to get the new growth to go ahead and push out and to push out quickly. This one right here, I had to cut all the way down to the stump, I had to go below the soil. Everything's been treated with fungicide and, oh, hey, what's up garden friends? Jeff here, how's everybody doing? Hope you're doing well, I'm great. I just picked up and started going. I've been filming out here for like the last hour and a half. So got the brain scramblies going on. I need to get these shelved away. Don't know where I'm gonna put them because the plan for the majority of these was to go into a terrarium. I'm not putting half dead plants in a terrarium that I want to look beautiful. Need to find a place to keep these things. And it's supposed to be nice outside for the next 10, hopefully longer than that, 10 days and on have temperatures in the 50s and coming up in the forecast lowest temperature I've been seeing is like 30. And this is prime temperature to get the plants moved back out of the growth space. Not uh, not all of the plants. The plants I brought in a couple weeks ago, the so cold hardy plants, the windmill palms, some of the yuccas, the shrubbery, there's a fatsia japonica over there. I'll probably go ahead and just move the mule palms out while I'm at it because I just think they would do better out there than they will in here because there's more airflow. They're going to get better sunlight out there. I just don't really have room for them in here at this point. I'd have to find a different spot and put in better grow lights for them. They're going to go back out. And this is great temperatures for windmill palms. They love this stuff where you're in the 40s and the 50s. It's misty and foggy outside. They suck that up. They love it. Glad to be able to get those moved back out. And we can have a peek underneath the frost blankets outside. I actually, I can take them off. They don't need them on anymore and see how everything is looking. I did. I cheated and took a peek at the laurels. Not looking great, but time will tell. Cold damage can take a long time to show, and uh, there can be other factors that make plants not look good. So I don't know. I don't want to get ahead of myself. We'll take the bags off and have a look at them. All this fails, just start stacking them. <laughs> have to go vertical here. Not ideal, but eh, is what it is. I suppose the advantage is now those two begonias are closer to the grow lights which is even better because I need to move this shelf up. I know I keep talking about that and haven't gotten around to it, but I need to get that ladder over here. So that's part of the getting things moved outside so I can get the ladder moved around. Also, don't know, I haven't, haven't noticed, and this has gone on this long. I'd say this Phalaenopsis here would probably appreciate a repot. I may even mount that to something because this one has always been crazy with the aerial roots. So I think it would grab onto something really, really well. The white, I know this is deviating. It's just what's happening train of thought here going on. This is the flow. This Waikiki back here, this Colocasia, it is the only plant out here that has not been responding to the name. The spider mites have just been incessant on there. So I'm thinking I may cut it back so that it's just a couple inches high and hit that with a systemic because the spray is just it's not doing anything. There's still spider mites in there. And as long as you've got the one bad apple in the bunch, it can ruin everything. Is that, a, is that something people say? It's a saying, right? I don't know. You know what I meant. I really think the best thing to do would be to just get this stuff out of there since I keep spraying it and the spider mites aren't going away. They're better, but they're still here. Just take that, throw it out, and then let me... Where's my... I need, I need another hand. There is the systemic. I am going heavy. This is a bear feed and protect. I found that it really works better if you go on the higher end of what you're supposed to use. I also just noticed that this self-watering container is full of water. This is one of the reasons that I'm not always crazy 
about these pots. Dump that out. It's not been, oh, that stank. I should not have put that inside of a plant. That probably wasn't a good idea. Having the plants wick moisture up, nothing wrong with that. That's great. But having them sit in water that has no oxygen in it, that's very bad. Luckily, this alocasia seems to be totally fine with it. But uh, just to be safe, I'm gonna pop a hole in there. There we go. It's not pretty, but it'll do. And now, when I water this, the water level won't get so high that it's up around the root zone. I'm not going to have to worry about things rotting out. Glad I noticed that because that would have ended very badly for that alocasia. Although, like I said, it just it seemed to be enjoying it. It's not something I would count on for very long. Okay. Did those few little things need to be done? Oh, but I don't, did I, did I explain the reasoning by cutting everything off and using the systemic? I'm not sure if I did. By doing this now, whatever growth comes out of there will hopefully have some traces of the systemic inside of it. By doing it this way, whatever comes out will hopefully have some traces of that and the more it puts out, the more it's going to have going on to help combat the spider. Did you get it? I hope that makes sense. Okay, there we go. That's better. Little wags. Love that windmill pump. Much happier to be outside, I'm sure. I wonder how the... What did I just... Dog poop. Great. I was saying I wonder how the Euonymus did because, you know, they got killed back like 90% of the way in the freeze last year. They look like they held up better this time. That's encouraging because I really did feel like this cold was way worse than the one from December of 2022, yet not seeing the damage on these. So that's good. You know, cold can manifest in different ways. Cold is cold, right? But there are a lot of other factors that go into things like the airflow, wind, humidity, and snowfall. If they've had some kind of insulation, they were a little bit more protected back there than they were the year before because they have these big bags over here and some ewes sitting on the walls. Maybe that has something to do with them doing better, even though it was much colder for much longer this time. I don't know. I have no idea at all. What I am very curious about is to have a look inside these bags and see how the bamboos are doing. I forgot I had them tied up fairly tightly around the bases. Come on, come on, almost got it. There we go. Let's have a look. Oh, those look good. They look fine. At least this one does. Maybe some dried up stuff here in the middle of all places. That's weird. You would think that the damaged foliage would be on the outside. Why is it just here in the middle? That doesn't make any sense. I wonder what's going on with this one. That looks pretty good. I can see where there might be some damage on the inside, but oh, they look better than they did last year when we had that freeze, so I'm not going to complain. Cold damage can take a while to set in, too, so this doesn't necessarily mean much of anything, but from looking at the data I got from the sensors, there's one sitting in this pot, and then I had one inside the bags. These stayed, I think the coldest they got was maybe 15 or 18 degrees. That's pretty good. That's what I would want for the, and their yellow bamboo. They can go much colder than that. I just wanted to preserve as much of the foliage as I could so that I don't have to wait for them to flush back out next year, and they had a lot of die-off last year. It didn't want to deal with that this year. The better they get through the winter, the more growth they're going to push out in the springtime, so it just made sense to wrap them up. Okay, so here's the... This is what I'm really concerned about. Let's have a look at what's going on underneath these bags. Okay, this is interesting. Just notice the sensor to this laurel's laid on the ground, and I had it, I thought, hanging up on the inside. So that would maybe account for why these were only reading being like three to five degrees above the outside temperature. Because I was on the ground, it was basically stuck to the outside on the zipper. I didn't, I don't know, I tried, this doesn't look too bad. I think this one's okay. Yeah, okay. Pleasantly surprised. The other night, just a few nights ago, I opened up the back furthest on the end and that thing was wilted. It looked so sad and so pathetic. This is a huge relief. I'll make sure to pick that up. See, this was laying, like, right there in the whiner. That bag was right about here, so that was... I don't have accurate data. Good to know. I wish that I had double-checked. I had it hanging from a branch in there, but I guess it fell down. That doesn't surprise me that it fell down, because this bag, the one on the end that had the sensor in, got blown open that first night when it was really, really windy. So that probably knocked it down. It was like seven degrees below zero when I zipped it back up. So I didn't, I didn't check the sensor. I rushed back inside. I should have checked it. It looked much better than they did after the freeze 
last year, that's for sure. Here's one of the reasons I wanted to get them uncovered right away. Is one, they don't need to be covered anymore. The coldest temperature forecast in the next 10 days is 30 degrees. It's going to be in the 40s and the 50s and rainy. These are thirsty plants. You see the dry circles around the bases? See that? You can tell where the water hasn't been getting to them because of the bags. They need water. It might be winter. They still need water. I don't feel like hooking up the hoses. They're shut down. Water shut off because, you know, it's freezing cold outside. It will do much better like this. Looks like <laughs> this one has got a lean to it. It is windy, so things might be kind of shaggy for a while. That's okay. I think one side of this oral is, is dried up and not looking too hot, but I think it'll be okay. Again, it is really early to say. It takes evergreens a while <laughs> to show their damage, usually. Broadleaf evergreens can go all the way through winter and look totally fine, and then spring hits, and then ugh, they just drop everything and look terrible. These, I would say that's probably not the case, right? I think they're looking pretty dang good. Definitely thirsty, but they're uncovered. It's supposed to be raining and misting over the next few days. That should get them perked back up. <sighs> What a relief. I'm so relieved. It, they could still go downhill. I don't know. Have to give it time, but they're looking pretty good. When this one was wilted down the other day, my heart just sank. I was bummed about that all weekend, but I probably shouldn't have been. I've been working with plants long enough. We know that there are some plants that will pull water from their foliage when it's cold out, and they do that to protect themselves from dying, essentially. The less water that's in the foliage, then the less water structure is inside of the leaf to burst and rupture when it freezes. It's a protective mechanism, and that happens with broadleaf evergreen. Viburnums, they tend to look pretty wealthy, at least here in St. Louis. They look pretty wealthy and sad during the winter time. It's because they pulled that moisture out from their foliage just to make room for ice crystals so they don't freeze and explode. Okay, what about you? Uh, that's better than I expected. And you? you? Yeah, I mean, it's not great, but the main thing is that the inner spears look good, the inner growth. Looks okay. That's what I want to see. I pretty much expected these to defoliate completely. So the fact that there's still some green in there is pretty good. These will probably continue to decline, though, over the next few weeks. Because that's just kind of how they work. They'll look fine and then just bleh, look terrible. Is there some of those plants that tend to look okay for a while? Unless it's been a really, really bad cold. And then they show the damage <laughs> later on. So that one looks fine. This one has a sandbag on it. Yeah, I don't know about fine but much better than I expected. Only two left. Ha. Huh. Not bad. I really, I would have been surprised if there was much damage on the needle palms, but you just never know. And these are the plants that I would have been the most upset, just completely devastated if something had happened to these. Something that can't be fixed. I mean, because these are, they're so big and needle palms grow like snails. I don't think I even could replace these. They're pushing five feet tall at this point. If I could replace them, I'd be looking at well over a thousand dollars per plant. I've had them for a long time, so that would really suck if something bad had happened to them. They look fine though. They're probably gonna have some dry tips and some crispy foliage from being in those bags. Things get pretty dry in there. I'll take that any day over some rotten center. So and here's a sable palm that I forgot about. Didn't cover that one up. <laughs> it looks Pretty good, considering we had multiple nights below zero. Good little microclimate there. All right, okay, I'm I'm pleased with the results. I don't wanna get ahead of myself, because like I said, you just never know. To give it several more weeks to really see what's going on here. With the bamboo, all I really care about is that they push out really strong new growth in the springtime, and uh, not too much die off on the inside. There's almost always going to be some when they're in containers, at least with these yellow bamboos here in zone six. Or, sorry, Zone 7. Zone 7, where it dips below zero every single year. This is not ideal. Rather unfortunate, actually. I don't, How did this happen? Well, that's a dumb question. I know how it happened. They were outside, had a chill, moved them inside, because it's going to be too cold for containerized bulbs, and here we are. Just last night, these were below the surface. These all just popped up today. It's off by one day, short by one day, to get these out. There are options here. I'm probably still going to move this outside, but I could, I suppose, just leave them be, keep it semi-moist, water, let the top dry out, you know, normal take care of plant stuff, and let them do their thing and have an early spring display of flowers in the house. I'm not all that inclined to do that because this has a lot of daffodils in it, and the center 
is filled with apricot tulips, which are beautiful. It's apricot, war- excuse you. Hey, kitten, what are you doing? You leave her alone. Okay, all right. I'm gonna hold on to this one while I talk because she's harassing pumpkin. The um, tulips, they're a late tulip, so it's going to be a while until they come up. And the daffodils are doing their thing now. And I don't know about y'all, I'm not crazy about the smell of your slipper. You can just go. There you go. Just slide on my hands. I'm not crazy about the smell, the scent from daffodils. I'm only one in the house, not from a large daffodil. This is a daffodil that gets, I think, 16 to 20 inches high. Since they've just come up from the surface of the soil, it should be okay to go ahead and move them back outside, and the chill should knock them back down. The only reason that I have any hesitation with that is because these have already had two knockdowns. They started to come up once, got knocked down when the cold came back. Then they started to come up again when it warmed up, and then they got knocked down again. This will be the third time, and they're using a lot of energy every time that happens, and that's, you know... It's a recipe for disaster with that many. Once or twice, not that big of a deal. Three times, eh, that could rot them out and kill them. But those are my options. There you go. I cleared cleared things out. You can get through there now. I do think it would be fun to have a container of forced bulbs in the house. It's just not, I don't know, not with these. But yeah, this just isn't it. If I'm going to do a forced container with bulbs, I prefer them be like little daffodils, like tete-a-tetes or minnows, maybe even jet fires, something like that, but not with ones that get really, really big. At the same time, if I take them out, they're going to get knocked back again. When I say knocked back, that means they'll sense the cold and shrivel back and the green should stop doing its thing. We're only about probably six to eight weeks from when these would start to come up, and they haven't had a an appropriate chill, a nice long multiple months of cold because we had a very mild fall here. It was very pleasant up until that Arctic blast came through. I was outside doing stuff. It was in the 40s and 50s every day. That's pleasant for where I live. Typically winters here, it's between like 18 degrees and 35, some smatterings of days in the 40s. So this has been very nice. It has really thrown off my bulb game. I do think the best thing to do is just to take this back outside. Have to get this bonsai moved back out too because I don't want this to start pushing out its buds. They're starting to swell a little bit. Not much, but there's a little bit of swelling in there. So those need to get back out too. If these were in containers, or no, they're in containers. If these were in the ground, whole different story. Wouldn't be concerned about it. I have bulbs outside. We can go look at them. There are bulbs that have been coming up for the last couple weeks. And they're still looking pretty good. Oh, what's going on here? Turbo, did you want to come out? Yeah, what's going on? What is that? Odd. Also, something that's very odd. But what? Really? How? I know it's dead. It's just bizarre seeing that much green left in it when it was so incredibly cold. Yeah, so they're still daffodils coming up that started coming up before that cold front even moved through here. And they pulled through it just fine. They had the snow on them. Helped protect them when they're in the ground. I just don't worry about it. Their growth slows down, and they end up being okay. I'm seeing seeing some stuff. Now I'm staying in front of the little gem. That's not, that's not good. Not great. Just have to wait until it warms up and see what happens, see where it pushes out new growth, and keep cutting away wherever it doesn't put out new growth. Just hope for the best. Got off topic so incredibly fast there. Yeah, there's that. Look at them. They're everywhere. I actually think there's more coming up now <laughs> than there were before. When it goes from being negative 7, negative 8, and up into the 40s, <laughs> they're probably like, oh, hey, this is nice. Let me start growing. This tells me that moving the ones from inside outside should be fine. But again, it's just different when they're in a container. You don't use the same planting depth, and things are much more prone to rot out. But uh, it is what it is. I think their odds will be better coming back out than staying in. I wonder if there are any other bulbs coming up. Yeah, I'm not seeing anything. It would be odd if there were bulbs coming up over here. That spot over there by the house is really warm. We've talked about that a lot. But there are also several hundred bulbs planted over here, so I feel like the potential's there that something could start popping up. Ooh, got some black wood on the Pragans by Burnham's. That's not good. The wiltiness, that's normal. Talked about that with the laurels over there. Defense mechanism. It's good that they do that. They're just preventing cell rupture by pulling water out from the foliage but the black bark that's not good now oh, fragrance viburnums are pretty sturdy they should be okay i almost forgot to check on this needle palm the one that i didn't protect because it's fairly well sheltered here underneath the spruce it looks okay you have to give that more time it's gonna be a while till you can really say what's going on there is 
you know, rot and everything can set in. I'll hit the center. That was some fungicide and that should do the trick. Just have to stay on top of that, especially when things start to dry out and the fungicide can do its thing better. Oh, wow. Yeah, neighbor's pool construction still going on. Almost been a year. Almost. They didn't start a year ago, but it's almost been a year since their contractor was over and tell me, hey, we're going to be putting in a pool. It'll be done by, I think that's a Labor Day. Yeah, I feel bad for him, but it'll be done sooner than later, I think. Yeah, okay. All right. I'm pretty happy with how things are looking out here. All good stuff. Going to take some time, probably another week or two to really get a better picture at damage. But my initial impression is that this is... This is all right. Could have been way worse. Finally got around to getting this metanella repotted. I have been, I don't want to say dreading, that's very dramatic, but just not an easy spot to get to, to pull the plant in and out and I had to take it around because I filmed it. It was sort of an odd thing to do because it wasn't really a video about repotting metanellas, but it sort of was. It was mostly just talking about potting soil and what I like to do for plants that like something organically rich, but also drains really well, like a metanella or a monstera ficus, those sorts of things. It's the next day, by the way. It started raining, like really, really lots of rain. So much rain, couldn't get anything done outside, but I was happy to get the, oh wow, look at that. But I was happy to get the covers off of everything. See how they're doing. This windmill palm, it just loves being moved inside. Every single year I pull this thing inside and within like a week and a half, it starts to push out an inflorescence. I hope it's okay with the fact that I'm going to stick it back outside as soon as it stops raining tomorrow. I don't have a female to cross-pollinate it with. There's not really a reason to try and hold on to that inflorescence. Really, it's just sucking the energy out of the plant. So, yeah, I don't really know what else we can do because, well, everything's sopping wet outside. I can't really get these moved out right now. I just missed the mark on when I could get them moved out. I'll get them moved out. It's probably not going to happen in the video because it looks like it's not going to dry out until after I'm done filming this video or when I need to be done filming this video I should say which is like literally in the next 45 minutes I still have to edit it nice and moist in here it is the next day so we can come in and have a look at the growth on the xanthosomas we got a little bit of something coming out of that one it's looking like this one's going to push that out but not see anything yet the other two that are in here like these were killed basically all the way down to the nub and they're little bit of firmness there, but not much. The fungus gnats in these containers is insane. They're like that when I opened the package, too. I should have mentioned that I was so caught up on everything else that went on with that plant order that I forgot to mention the very important thing of uh, what the, the, the were full of fungus gnats. Where did this come from? How did that get down there? I don't I don't know what that is. I gave everything the water with the bacillus thuringiensis that should do the trick. If not, I'll put in some of the sticky traps just to help cut back on things. I'm not seeing anything out of the begonias yet. I really wouldn't be expecting to see anything, but it's only been like, what? It's only been like 72 hours since the plants came in. Oh, the Fetonias are doing something. There's some mold in there. Not surprised by that at all. That's nothing that can't be fixed with a little spray of peroxide. If a plant is nice and healthy, I usually say just leave it and things will work themselves out. Gonna rely on that being the case with plants that are in that sort of shape though. Probably pop that open and get some peroxide down in there. <sighs> Made a mess while I was repotting that metanella too. Got dirt everywhere over here. Yeah, I'll get those moved out probably later this evening when the rain lets up a little bit. I hope everybody's doing well. Thanks for hanging out. I know not a lot happened in this video. January into February, the content's a lot harder <laughs> to pull off because it's a lot of just sitting and waiting for spring. But there are going to be random repots and those things going on. Would like to gather some more things so I can do more repots so that that's all in one video instead of like repot a plant here and repot a plant there. I'd like to just get it all done in one swoop moving forward. Not all of it, but the few things that I have out here that I think could use a repot. Get that handled before spring gets here. Next week, I think I'm going to be installing some more grow lights. I would like another light kind of right around here and another one over here. And for that, I might just, I don't know how, but I may just try and get this light over to that hook. So there's already a hook right there. I don't need this light coming down on the pond anymore. Although, well, there are the spasophyllums in there. So yeah, I, never mind. I might just be installing another light over there. We'll see. Probably have to go to the hardware store get some two by fours and brace things up. I can't make any promises either, but that's what I'm thinking I need to do next week is do some tweaking with my lighting because there's like lots of stuff that's gotten old and just not working 
Need to fix some stuff up in here. I'm down below say hi, I love talking to everybody. What's going on with your plants? It's a fun time of year, taking care of the house plants and dealing with all the fun issues that arise with keeping plants in sight. Always something. Got some pruning to do back there. As always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye bye.